today I'm going to be sharing to you about the challenges of our agricultural business plan. So some of the facts, we are going to do some introduction and I'm going to put some facts as you, as you think about doing an agricultural business plan. So one of the facts is that that's only 12% of the wild lands can be used for farming. That is a fact. So we have some limited land for use. Number two, that the farming uses 70% of the wild fresh water. So you have to know about what is the source of the water which you use for your farming. And then farming generates 12% of the greenhouse gases emission annually. So as you think about doing a proposal, as you think about doing your farming, do you consider about the greenhouse gas emission? So what are you considering about doing it, doing the proposal? So it's something we have to check. And also we have to check about the biodiversity. In that, over 80% of the crop species depend partly on pollination by wildlife. For instance, I've told you I do the cactus farming. What about if I do farming of cactus, let's say 50 acres, and then it affects the biodiversity, like the insect, the insect which do pollination. So as I consider doing my proposal, those are some of the facts. I have to consider about the lands, that's only 12% is used. About the water, that's the farming uses 7% of the water. The, the greenhouse gases which are going to be emitted, of which there are 2%, and also the, the biodiversity of the crop species. So I'm going to continue some facts that farming is a complex, unpredictable, and individual business. For instance, I've said I do cactus farming. People wonder why, why are you alone doing the cactus farming? Because number one, it's a bit complex, it's a bit unpredictable, and then it's an individual business. That's my area of my passion. So something you have to consider as you do your proposal. Number two, farmers must meet the need in, they must meet the changing needs of the environment. That's the environmental regulators and consumers. As I was doing introduction, I've said that there is the a greenhouse gas emissions and also the change of biodiversity. So as you do your farming, the farmers you must meet the need changing of the needs of the environment. And also for, for the consumers, the consumers are increasingly becoming aware of their health about and also getting concerned about the products with their health benefits. So how do you meet the need of these consumers? Even as you think about, I'm going to engage farming. I want to do a proposal. I want to do a business plan in farming. Are you thinking about the changing needs of the environment? The third one, there is a pressure which arises from the climate change, the soil erosion, and the biodiversity loss. And we have said that because of the emission of the greenhouse gases, so what do you do? A lot of pressure arises. How do you compact the climate change? As you do the crops, how do they help to compact the climate change? How do you reduce the carbon sink? So there is that challenge, the pressure which arises from the climate change, the soil erosion, and also the biodiversity loss. The loss of the insects, the flora and the fauna, the changes which are arise from that. And then the consumers have challenges on their change in taste in food and concern about how it is produced. So as you do the farming, every consumer there are challenges about the tests. Is it acceptable to me? Or the, how is the food produced? Is it organic? That's why it raises the things of like organic certification. Where was it produced? So how was it produced? And then the number five, there are the changes in the natural world. That is the plants, pests, and diseases which poses some challenges. So one of the problems the farmers face is the coping with the climate change, the soil erosion and biodiversity. We just I draw this one from the fact we have mentioned uh, aforementioned. So we have a fact of coping with the climate change the soil erosion and the biodiversity change. And also we have the, the challenge of facing or satisfying their customers' needs. That is their health, their taste, their expectations, their demands, all that customer needs. So we face that challenge. And then we, have, uh, we also meet raising demand for more food and higher quality. And then four, that is also investing in the farm productivity. So how does it affect when you are doing your business planning? Those are some of the factors you have to consider. So you also have to consider adopting and learning new technologies. For instance, nowadays people are doing the hydroponics, the soilless farming. Because earlier we had said that there is the land is less, around 12% is 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 uh, which can be farmed. And then the other one is you stay resilient against the global economic factors, the changes in the global warming, the carbon sink, the reduction of the carbon sink. 
So those are the some of the global economic factors. The changes in the the trade factors, like uh, like the barriers, but the barriers to trade. How do you get to great? For instance, currently there is a COVID-19. So how do you still resilient again amidst of the COVID-19? Because also they affect the economic, the economic factors in the region. So the last one is the mitigation of rural to urban migration. The youth are moving to the to the urban areas. So if they are moving to the urban areas, they move from the rural to urban areas. So who is going to farm? So those are some of the challenges the, the farmers face. So that is sort of that. There's some impact on the business plan. We have talked about these facts. So how do they impact on the business plan? So basically in the business planning, we are going to consider some six things in the business planning, in the agricultural planning, mostly about the executive, the executive summary, <coughs> about the mission, the goals, and the objectives, because these are basically the most the main the main subheadings of our business plan, about the organizational plan, which includes the human resource management, about the operational plan, and also the marketing plan. So I'm going to begin with the executive plan. And basically, the executive plan is all that you give is a summary of the corresponding business plan. So after you have done your missions, your goals and objectives, your background, your organizational plan, your marketing plan. So all that summary, you summarize it in the executive summary. So basically, the executive summary gives the key points to the business and the corresponding plan. So that at the next one, you have to engage in the missions and the goals and the objectives. So you have to ask yourself a question. I want to do an agricultural business plan. So why am I in agricultural business? Why not in the Mitumba business? Why not in the, maybe the shoe business? Why do I want to engage myself in the agricultural business plan? And this will have to give you your objective. When I went to KUND Nutrition, now I'm able to actually explain to people what Moringa does from a nutritional perspective. And so when it came down to now doing a business plan, <laughs> um, it was because a financial needed it, not because I knew I needed it. I'd never seen a business plan in my life um, because I was from film school. Then to a nutrition class, I mean, to starting a business, then thinking, uh, how will I explain Moringa to people? then going back to school to do uh, nutrition and then still diving back into the business. So I got mentorship from Inorero University, if you guys remember, and a friend is the one who shared the first business plan I'd ever seen in my life uh, from IFC, which I used now as a template. But you see, it didn't quite have much meaning to me at the point. Yes, I could see what I needed to do. But because I was already into the business, now I started understanding uh, slowly by slowly. And what I realized as an entrepreneur is that a lot of times when we are doing these business plans, uh, is having that correlation between the challenges you're going through and these points you've been given. So as I grew along, I won an award for European Union uh, for impact, which now linked me to even higher training on how to now literally make the business plan come to life and what were the key areas that I needed to look at. So I'll just share a few, like there was the Unsolved model and the Unsolved model basically, it helped me to have a growth strategy because at that time I was in the growth process. And then when it came to risks, because in business you come across a lot of risks and some happen to you but you don't realize where, where what what this risk what is exactly is it uh, affecting in my business so if it's political like now we have covid on our plate we have uh, pol politics you know we are going towards the political uh, issues care is on our case they're saying if you don't pay your taxes or you don't do your returns they are blocking your pin you know, so um, what is all this this uh, going to do to you, to your business at this time? Because you have to look broadly at what are the risks now that are affecting you. So political, there's economic, there's your social risks. For me, it was a stigma of 
moringa ni miti shamba herbalism environmental yeah for us with moringa moringa has the highest uh, carbon sequestration in that it's able to to mitigate against greenhouse gases so what does that mean how many trees do we need to plant to be able to actually make a difference in our environment uh, when you're talking about your you know your business strength what that's where now you come and do your self analysis what is your strength for me the, my strength is that i handle the front end and my husband who's an agronomist handles the farmers so when we started the business we had to to look broadly at what each one of us had a strength in and that has really helped the business to grow because we had to handle the whole value chain we had when we started um with moringa that 2007 8 you know uh 2009 i quit my film job uh and started uh, going to calro which was curry then going to wild agroforestry to look for information going to minister of agriculture finding people who had a lot of thesis papers dissertations on moringa but there was no commercialization so as an entrepreneur i just dove in and now latched on to these people who became my partners to be able now to get the information and the knowledge that would help me to build the business i think frida for me the, the the biggest help to an entrepreneur is to just have a template because from that template now you can begin to to just keep putting in the the things that you need to work on the people that you need to reach out like you we met i think it was 2013 or 14 I think 14. At KCC. Yeah. <laughs> yes, 2014. Be involved in the creation of your business plan. We give you high level insights of what you need to do so that you get them. So, it's good to have a template and it's good to have a a business development person that can help you, especially somebody in that field, all right? Because we have many general business development support people and then now you can get the person that who is in agri business like a Nelson, all right? they come to me when they have the harvest and it's trouble so somebody will say frida i have all these potatoes i don't know what to do with it help me market them they send me pictures of onions they send me pictures of melons and i'm like when you started this farm why didn't you call me so we do the business plan so what do you what would you advise a farmer yes you have land you have melons you have potatoes and all that what should they do so that they're not they don't eat up all their melons and potatoes Let's hear from Nelson as you get your breath Elizabeth. There is something I said about farm to fork approach, eh? Yes. I know it's your uh, quality assurance principle, but it's also applicable when we're doing a production. For instance, you have to produce your said the potatoes, let's use the potato. Eh? You want to produce, you are doing it from the farm. So how does it reach to the end consumer? So that's one principle. The fork of the business. <laughs> yeah. You should also have that principle. farm to fork that's one of the yes. principal things when you are in yeah. the business field in the agricultural you should have wheat so you are doing uh, your products so what is your target market because you are talking about the market planning because the person who is saying maybe how do you do the pot- the potatoes they are ready somebody who has not done the business the marketing planning because you have said you have to do it from the farm to fork so you getting it i'm getting from the farm to the time we are processing to the time of harvesting so how does it reach to my target market so that's something uh, that's something you should do and more often like uh, current what we are doing actually what i usually advise farmers before you start producing something go and get the market first you should know your market so why are you producing it you are producing potatoes so the first question why are you producing them are you producing them to eat for the family use or are you producing them for the market that's something you should ask yourself So I I'll, my best thing out that by somebody is the farm to fork approach. How much to the farm and how is it going to get to the consumer?